Hello and welcome. Today we are discussing string methods and also one string property that is used frequently. Let's start with our dev environment setup. Make a copy of your folder from the last tutorial. I was using a folder named JS2. I made a copy and renamed the folder JS3. This new folder will have the same file tree structure and the only file we will change today is the main.js file. On the right side of the screen and underneath VS Code, I have the Chrome browser with Chrome DevTools open. On the left, I have Visual Studio Code open and it is on top of the Chrome browser window. To prevent going back and forth between VS Code and the browser window, I'm using a VS Code extension. To set this up, go to the extensions icon on the far left of the VS Code window. Click the icon and in the search bar at the top, type in Live Server. I already have the Live Server extension installed. Go ahead and pause the video to install it in your VS Code. To launch your web page with Live Server, go to the bottom right of your VS Code window and click Go Live. The display will change to show you the port number your web page will be available at. A new browser window will also launch with the IP address 127.0.0.1. This is the internal IP address for your computer, which can also be referred to as the local host. The IP address will be followed by a colon and the port number. Use this address in Chrome for this tutorial. The benefit of the Live Server extension is the browser will reload your changes every time you save. That way we do not always need to go to the browser window to click the refresh button. With the dev environment housekeeping finished, let's move on to string methods. Delete the contents of your main.js file. Declare a variable at the top of the file named my variable with the keyword const. We are not using the keyword let because we do not want to reassign the value of this variable. Assign the string value mathematics to your variable. Now that we have string data, let's take a look at the length property. The length property uses dot notation. That means after my variable, we add a period and then reference the length property. The length property will return the number of characters in the string. We still need to use a console log statement to see the value returned in the console window. When the length property is applied to the variable we created, it returns the number 11. If we change the value of the variable and save the file by pressing the control key and the letter S at the same time, the length property returns the new value. Now let's try it on a sentence. The full sentence is still just one string, and the length property counts all of the characters in the string. Let's clear out the length property from our file and look at string methods. String methods also use dot notation. The first method we'll look at is the character at method. This method returns the character at the position we provide. Asking for the character at position zero will return the capital M from our string. Asking for the character in the fifth position will return the lowercase m from mathematics. Position six will return the A. It's important to understand that the position count starts at zero instead of one. While the length of our string is equal to 11, the character positions we can reference are zero through 10. Now let's look at the index of method. In a way, it is the opposite of the character at method. We provide the index of method with the character or group of characters we're looking for, and it tells us the position of the first occurrence within the string. Providing the group of characters MAT returns position five. Capitalizing the M in the group we are looking for returns position zero. Removing the M from the group returns position one, even though the letters AT are also at position six. Adding the letter I after the AT now returns position six. A very similar method to index of is last index of. Instead of the first occurrence, last index of provides the position of the last occurrence of the character or group of characters we provide. Now providing AT returns the position six instead of one. If we change the group to ATH, the last index of method returns position one. Let's take a look at the slice method. The slice method accepts starting and ending position parameters and returns the characters from the start position to the ending position. Note the returned result does not include the ending position. If the ending position parameter is not provided, the slice method returns the characters from the start position to the end of the string. If the ending position parameter is less than or equal to the start position parameter, nothing will be returned. 
If the ending position parameter is one number higher than the start position parameter, only the character at the start position will be returned because the slice method will not return the character at the ending position. The to uppercase method does not require a parameter, but unlike the length property, methods still need the parentheses at the end to be called into action. The to uppercase method returns the string in all uppercase. The to lowercase method returns the string in all lowercase. The includes method returns Boolean data. If the character or group of characters we provide the method is not inside the string, the includes method returns false. Likewise, if they are inside the string, the includes method returns true. The split method splits the string wherever the character we provide occurs and returns the resulting multiple strings within an array. We will cover arrays in an upcoming tutorial. Notice providing E as the split character for our string means the character E is not included in the resulting strings. Providing empty quotes as the split character returns every character as a separate string within the resulting array. If we change the string to a list of comma separated values and split wherever a comma occurs, each value is represented as its own string in the resulting array. If our string is a sentence and we split wherever there is a space, each word becomes a string in the resulting array. We have covered some useful string methods today, but there are many more. I will provide a link to the MDN web docs page for strings below. There you will find a complete listing of string methods to reference and practice with. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope this tutorial has helped introduce you to the length property and some useful methods for JavaScript strings. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.